Alrighty folks, so we're back with our um, charger project and um, so as you can see uh, first layer of the potting compound is in I've taken the tape off uh, we filled the centers here on the last video and filled up some of the round um, areas here so next thing we need to do before we pour any more compound is to make the electrical connections uh, to the inductors now how they've been wound is we've got several strands of uh, enamel copper wire so uh, the singularly best way over the years that I've found to take the enamel off this type of wire is just to basically blow torch it um, I know some people have, will have a problem with that you know start telling you to use sandpaper and all that kind of thing uh, I've done that it works with single strands but we, where we have multiple uh, twisted strands like this I actually think the blow torching is going to do the trick so <clears throat> fortunately the old blow torch I had well past its uh, sell by date so I hit my local hardware this morning hoping I'd get a map torch but uh, they only had one of these little things but I think it'll do the trick uh, we don't need to um, don't need to you know the whole burning down the house thing so let's fire it up and uh, see if we can burn off some of that enamel so, got a lighter just kind of essential I've seen people using cigarette lighters with these um, sure be my guest uh, but it's uh, not something I would like to do right, we have ignition That's what we want to see is that bit of yellow flame there. Um, so we're just burning off the um, enamel. Probably want to take off about an inch, maybe an inch and a half worth of it. Just move the flame around a little bit. Make sure we uh, do as much of that as we can. Oh boy! Yeah, this thing doesn't have the most uh, fine adjustments on it. Oh there, get in the time. That is the first phase of the operation. Now we've got to clean off the kind of uh, soot and we should have some nice clean copper there ready to solder and crimp.
Yeah. <clears throat> After precision application of uh, flamethrower and wire wheel, we got some copper ready to be soldered. Alright, he just cut us uh, making the connections here. I just decided to break out my uh, trusty 100 watt soldering iron and uh, just in the process of making up our uh, first connection here going quite well. I'm just putting some extra solder on here because I want to be able to ensure that everything is thoroughly wetted. Um, and that we're uh, getting the best possible joint here so just wrapped some extra solder around it. Going to come in with my 100 watt iron and just melt that solder there that we've uh, applied. Just let the heat come up from underneath the solder joint. Just work it in there, let it spread. Nice uh, melting action. Just take my iron away. Because there's so much thermal mass here, we actually have to hold a, a bit of firm pressure on each joint. Um, just until things cool down a bit. And uh, that's that one done. So, again, just on the number two joint here for this, for this inductor, I'm going to just bring my, uh, my nice hot iron in here. Uh, start warming things up. Get a nice flow of solder going here. Make sure that we work it in as much as possible into the cores. Like so. We take another piece of our tri-rated uh, flex. Go ahead and um, get that tinned. Just get a nice flow of solder into that wire. down. And again just bring it up nice and close to our connection. And just work the iron around there just to get a nice uniform heat into everything. See that there's not a good joint going on here because I haven't actually got enough solder uh, worked into this yet. So the solder is wicking back up through the flex, which is a bad thing because it will make a brittle point in the uh, in the wire. But not a lot we can do about that at the minute. joints that we really have to get right um, to the amount of uh, current that we're going to be sticking through this. So now that I have the joint you know roughly where I want it to be come around and just wrap some more solder uh, just around the joint. 
like so. Highly entertaining, I know. Point of this is that we just get the best possible solder joint that we can achieve here with the conditions we're working with. I really probably should have gotten some nice uh, crimp ferrules for this. But we'll try it out as is, see how we fare. <coughs> Still getting over that damn flu. Had it almost two weeks now. There we go. So I'll go ahead and do the other uh, two joints. No point boring you all more to death uh, with what we have here. But we'll come back. Um, he shrink them and uh, we should be all set. Hey, so I've just gone ahead and finished these off. He shrink them. Um, so we're all set now to uh, start getting ourselves organized for the next uh, porathon. So I'm going to get these cables into the position I want them to be in and we'll go ahead and get some more of our old friend the duct tape and uh, get this baby duct taped up and, uh, we should be all set to start pouring more compound. So that is uh, how we've made the connections. Don't know if it's going to work out. Guess time will tell. Stand by for action. Alrighty guys, we just poured in more compound. I didn't bother uh, exposing you all to that. It's just pretty much the same as we saw previously. So we're pretty much coming up near the top of the inductors. Excuse me, got the hiccups. And uh, we're going to let that layer set now and uh, we should be able to top it off then. The final layer and that should be the um, that should be the job done in that regard. So yeah, not looking too bad. Um, taking a good bit of this potting compound but it's going in there. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back soon, uh, stay cool.